I have no idea what to do with my hands when I have this much sleeve. I mean, I love it, but I have no clue. Hey guys, it's Sarah from Just My Typewriter, and today I'm here with another cleaning video. Now, many of you probably know that my default cleaning system when it comes to cleaning the outside of typewriters is a cleaning product called Simple Green. Now, Simple Green is exclusive to the United States, unfortunately, so it's hard to get anywhere else, and if you can import it, it's expensive. And typewriter cleaning should not be that complicated, so I'm on a mission to find a new cleaner to use on my typewriters when I'm cleaning. I've I've tested a few out and today I'm testing out another one. So on the Typewriter Revolution blog, they do have a couple cleaning tips. You can clean the outside of typewriters with spray cleaners like Simple Green. You can also use soap and water. And one of the suggested cleaners on that list is a product called Scrubbing Bubbles, which you use for cleaning your bathroom. So I decided this week to give that a try on a brand new typewriter in my collection, this 1956 super silent Smith Corona in seafoam green. So when I first got this typewriter, it was from an estate sale. It had some corrosion and rust damage on the outside of it. So I already knew that the finish was kind of damaged as it was. And I was looking to find a way to clean it where I could still protect those rusted areas. I wasn't going to dissolve the paint in those areas, but also clean up the outside of the finish so it's that really bright green seafoam color that the Smith Corona released in this line. This is one of the five series typewriters, which are my favorite Smith Corona typewriters. They had a bunch of them. This is the higher end model. So they had the Clipper, the Silent, the Sterling, and this is the Silent Super, which I always call the wrong thing. I always call it the Super Silent, but it's the Silent Super because the super silent doesn't exist. So when I first got this typewriter, the first thing I did, which is the first thing I always do, is I took the air compressor to it. I just blow off all the dust out of that machine. Now, I know some people have said that they don't have access to air compressors, or they might live in an apartment building like I do now, and they aren't able to have an air compressor where they are. So you do have a few other options for alternatives to using compressed air. You can use things like a leaf blower. I've heard of people using hair dryers. I've heard of people using vacuum cleaners anything that'll blow out that dust or suck out that dust of those areas because that really gives you a great base to start with when you're cleaning your typewriter. You're just getting out all the gunk that's in there so you can really start to dissolve the leftover bits in that typewriter as you're cleaning. So I went ahead and did an air compressing on this and then I took off all the paneling pieces. Now the Smith Coronas I find are really easy to take apart. There's a couple screws on the bottom, a couple screws on the back, and all the pieces come off. I take the pieces off of my typewriter because the next thing I do is I take mineral spirits to the inside of the typewriter to clean out all the leftover ink that's in there, dust that may have gunked up in that type segment basket in the front that makes the keys feel sticky as they're going up and down. It cleans off all the ink residue on the type slugs and mineral spirits is a paint thinner. So you do not want to get it on the outside of your typewriter. It will dissolve and ruin the paint finish. It'll ruin decals. So I did want to go in and get mineral spirits on the inside of the typewriter to clean that out, but I didn't want to risk any of the paint getting messed up in that process. So I removed all the panels from this typewriter, and then I was able to also clean those panels separately, not on the typewriter, with scrubbing bubbles. Now, scrubbing bubbles is a bathroom cleaner, so in your cleaning store, if you go to Walmart or whatever you go to, it is in the bathroom cleaning aisle. There are a couple different varieties of scrubbing bubbles, and it's important to stay away from anything that has bleach in it. Bleach will mess with the colors on a machine. So I went with this Scrubbing Bubbles Mega Shower Foamer Spray. I saw somebody put on the Typewriter Revolution blog that you wanted the kind with a spray gun, not the aerosol kind of dispenser on the front of it. So I went with this one. It does not have bleach in it, which is what I was going for. And I first did a patch test. I always suggest you patch test any new cleaner on your typewriters before you go ham on it, because you wanna make sure that you're not doing anything that will damage the paint surface. When you patch test, I usually take a little Q-tip and I will rub the cleaner over an area and I'll let it sit a little bit. Then I wipe it away to see if it's done anything to bubble up the finish of a typewriter, if maybe it's causing some dissolving in the paint on a typewriter. And I always do this in an inconspicuous location, like maybe on the paneling under the carriage, so it'll be covered when you're using the carriage, maybe on the bottom or on the inside of one of the panels, so you'll never see that damage, just to make sure that the cleaner is going to be okay for using on that. So I did patch test first with this cleaner. I had no problems with it. And then I went in to the actual cleaning process. 
So for this process, I took each individual panel and did them separately. I would spray on the cleaner in a small section and then I took a toothbrush and scrubbed into those textured surfaces on this typewriter. It was suggested on the Typewriter Revolution blog to use a toothbrush with this cleaner to really get into those nooks and crannies of the textured surface. These machines do have a textured pattern to them. A lot of the machines from the 1950s do. So using a toothbrush really gets in between those cracks. I was a little bit worried about using a toothbrush though because I was worried it would wipe away the finish. I have spray painted machines before and when you spray paint machines and you go to sandpaper off a drip that you might have, you can rub away the textured finish of the typewriter that really messes up the finish. I was worried about using a toothbrush having the same effect but with soft bristles and not a ton of pressure, you're not going to wear away too much of that finish. I would just be careful using a toothbrush not to scrub too hard like pretend you don't have cavities on your typewriter. Then after I scrubbed it down with a toothbrush, I wiped it off with a damp cloth just to make sure I had removed all the cleaner so it wasn't eating away at that paint after a while. On the first round, I had no idea if this cleaner actually did anything. The paneling looked almost exactly the same, so I wasn't sure if it was really doing anything effective, but as I was using the toothbrush to scrub down those surfaces, I really started to notice that the foam coming off of the foam cleaner was turning brown, like it was removing gunk. And it really took a couple layers to get down to a green finish on this typewriter, which to me signifies that this cleaner is maybe a little bit more gentle than Simple Green. With Simple Green, I can usually clean off a lot of that dirt in the first round, but I also let it sit a lot longer. With this cleaner, I went in and agitated it with the toothbrush. I was able to physically see the dirt coming off of the typewriter and then wipe it away with that damp cloth. It just had to be done in thin layers. I also wasn't sure what it was going to do to the finish, so I didn't want to let it sit on there too long to dissolve both dirt and the green paint. So after a ton of scrubbing on each individual panel, I then dried them off with a dry cloth and then I took them out to the air compressor and just sprayed them down with some more air to get all that gunk and leftover dampness out of the textured surface. You really don't want to leave anything wet on your typewriter. It does promote rust and this machine was already rusting in some places. Now I was not able to get rid of the discoloration in some of those areas, but I was able to clean up the finish around those areas and just generally clean off the typewriter. I like having a really clean typewriter. I like the process of removing all the paneling and cleaning them. It just makes it feel like a little bit more mine once I get it, like I'm adding it to my collection and kind of getting familiar with it. Now, one of the things I was really surprised with as I was cleaning this machine was the typeface. I'm used to Smith Kronos all having pretty much the same typeface, but as I went to clean this machine with mineral spirits on the inside of that type basket, I realized the font looked wonky. The font actually on this, or typeface, it's typeface, not font, the typeface on this was actually capital letters on both the shift letters and on the lowercase letters. They were both capitals and they had no serifs on them. So I went into the typeface book that was provided by Ted Monk on his blog. I will link that down below. And I matched the type face, not the font, the typeface to the styles that were released by Smith Corona. And I found out that this typeface is called Elite Gothic. It is 12 characters per inch. Everything is caps. It's really interesting to look at and kind of cool. I've never had a typewriter look like this when typing. So I was really excited to have a new typeface in addition to having a green typewriter. I love green typewriters. These machines are some of my favorites. I love Smith Corona machines and I really love their five series. This one again is from 1956. This type of machine came in a couple different colors. They had coral pink, desert sand, which is like a grayish color. They also had alpine blue, and then they had this seafoam green color. I've had green Smith Corona typewriters before, but they were different shades of green. So I did have a 1960s Smith Corona machine in a similar body design, but that color was called sage gray, even though I thought it looked green. It was a much more yellow green than this one was. This is a bluer green look. And then I also have a Smith Corona pacemaker, which is one of my favorite machines. And that is in a color called spruce green and as you can see here these two next to each other they are very different shades of green so i was really excited to have a green typewriter in my collection and have a green typewriter with a really cool typeface i'm always looking for new ways to clean my typewriters every time i get a new typewriter i like to try something new i've been experimenting with cleaners here for a little while 
I've used Simple Green on a lot of my typewriters. I feel very comfortable using it on a lot of typewriters, but it's not always accessible to everyone because it is a United States product and it's not exported anywhere. One of the number one comments I get about Simple Green besides it's not being available in someone else's country is the smell. Some people just don't like the smell of Simple Green. I think I'm desensitized to it at this point, even though it does come in a few different scents. You can also get the scrubbing bubbles in a few different scents. I think this one's Fresh Rain, but they also have like lavender and clean scented. I didn't mind the scent on this, it was pretty strong. I've tried other cleaners as well. I used LA's Totally Awesome Cleaner on my Skywriter lamp project, and I found the smell of that one to be overwhelmingly industrial, so I didn't like the smell on that cleaner, but I know a lot of people also use that kind of cleaner on their typewriters, and that's available at the Dollar Tree. I was pretty happy with this cleaner, and I think I will try it again on some other machines. I did get a comment when I posted about this on Instagram from the Typewriter Revolution Instagram that this cleaner can sometimes eat away at paint on the 1950s machines, that textured finish. I didn't experience any of that, but I already had some paint damage on my typewriter to begin with, so I knew that was a risk going into this project. If it's something you've never tried before, I really, really encourage that patch testing just to make sure it's safe, and I wouldn't let it sit on the finish of your typewriter for a long period of time. I would scrub it in there and then wipe it off and make sure you dry it completely from your machine just so you don't have that chance of it eating away at paint over time. So I really did like this. I actually really enjoyed using a toothbrush to clean my typewriters. I might try that trick again with a different uh, cleaning solution. I really liked it. I'm the kind of person that if you give me a bathroom tile floor and a bucket of cleaner, I would love to go in there with a toothbrush and clean between all the tiles. It's meticulous, it's repetitive. I enjoy those kind of cleaning tasks. That's probably why I like cleaning typewriters so much. And I really liked that process on this machine as well, getting to use that toothbrush and scrub into all the little cracks and nooks and crannies. That's just the kind of person I am, and I really enjoyed doing that process on this machine. I also think that the finish looks really nice at the end of the process. It's not sticky because I did wipe off all of the product and then I dried it with the air compressor. I had trouble with the LA's Totally Awesome Cleaner being sticky after I dried it off of there. And I know some people have had trouble with Simple Green rusting away at metals, which is why I encourage you to take all the paneling off your typewriter if you're going to clean it. There's just a lot of options for typewriter cleaners out there, and that's why I wanted to try this one, and I'm pretty happy with it. So now that this typewriter is clean, let's do a little type test. Leave me down below some suggestions for cleaners that you use on your typewriters. I'm looking for my new Holy Grail cleaner. I think we're getting close, so leave me some suggestions down there so I can try some new things on my machines. If you're interested in more typewriter content, I do have some more videos on this YouTube channel. I also have a repair and restoration playlist where I have videos about cleaning and typewriter repair. I'm gonna link that down below as well. And I also have an Instagram at just.my.typewriter. I wanna thank you all so much for joining me today and remind you that you're just my type writer. What are you doing? You okay? That was very cute.